Once the infant has been weaned from the ventilator, you now need to think about the various components that need cleaning and sterilizing. The most important one is the flow sensor. And although there are a number of ways of cleaning and sterilizing it, what happens before this is really important as to whether the flow sensor continues to work or not. In the middle are heated wires which reach incredibly high temperatures and if there have been secretions at any time of the ventilation, that heat is enough to bake the secretions onto the wires. If that happens, you will never get those secretions off, no matter what you do. The flow sensor will not work correctly as the secretions have changed the resistance of the wires and the flow sensor does not recognize the new resistance. Therefore, the most important thing is the minute the flow sensor comes off the patient, you agitate the flow sensor in a bowl of cold water. Do not hold the flow sensor under the stream of water from the tap as this will destroy the wires and it doesn't matter how long it takes to sterilize the flow sensor. Once this is done, it is entirely up to the hospital's infection control policy or the protocols of the NICU as to whether the flow sensor gets autoclaved or cold sterilized. The flow sensor can be steam sterilized in an autoclave. If the autoclave is set at 134 degrees centigrade, then the flow sensor must remain in the autoclave for five minutes. If the autoclave is set at 121 degrees centigrade, then the flow sensor must remain in the autoclave for 15 minutes. The flow sensor can be cold sterilized, in which case the sterilizing fluid recommended by the infection control department must be at the correct strength for the correct period of time. Thereafter, it has to be rinsed with sterile water and left to dry before reusing. The flow sensor can also be plasma sterilized or by ethylene oxide. If it is ETO sterilized, it must have a period of aeration before use again. For storage purposes, it would be best if the flow sensor was put back into the box in which it arrived. The flow sensor can be placed back into the foam cutout in the box. The exhalation block and the silencer also need to be sterilized. This can be done in a steam autoclave. The plastic ends on the silencer may become brittle after about 20 sterilizing cycles. Once you replace the exhalation block into the ventilator, lock it into position. To finish off the cleaning of the ventilator, the screen and the flow sensor cable, they can be wiped down with whatever cleaning material is recommended by the Infection Control Department's policy. If the protocol in your unit is to use a single-use bacterial filter on the exhalation block, it must be changed every 24 hours or as soon as you see some condensation in the neck of the filter. If the filter gets wet, it builds up a resistance in the circuit and you will end up with a higher peak end expired pressure. In an attempt to overcome this issue of water getting into the bacterial filter, we now have a right angled connector which is in the packet with the patient's circuit and this prevents the water from getting into the bacterial filter. Should water collect in the inspiratory limb, you need to prevent that from getting all the way up to the flow sensor. Because this is a straight connector here, this makes it difficult to run water back into the chamber. One tip is to gather as much of the water as possible to this point and then very quickly slightly loosen the temperature probe and reconnect it. 
In this way, the vacuum in the inspiratory limb is broken and the water will run back into the chamber. Although you may have a slight loss of recruitment, it is much better than disconnecting the whole assembly to get rid of the water.